If you were already familiar with my surf journey, you will know I like Surf Beginner. With a combined attempts of 26,515 on KS of Alone, it's clear I enjoy surfing it. But my love of Surf Beginner didn't start on KSF. In fact, I didn't even know what KSF was for my first few months. The first map I have ever tried to surf on was Surf Derpis. I spent a good 20 minutes trying to get onto the second ramp, but to no avail. Becoming frustrated, I searched for a different map, and there it was, calling to me. Beginner, that's me, I'm a beginner. So I joined the server and gave it my best shot. Stage one, no problem. Feeling confident, I rushed into stage two, which didn't go so well. Stage two features a ramp placed perpendicular to the first, which at my skill level at the time was impossible. I did however find a way to cheat the stage and emerge triumphant, but that didn't set me up for the rest of the map. Surf Beginner isn't very appropriately named. To complete it, you will need a few skills not every beginner possesses. And not only that, Stage 7 has very small ramps, which is a far cry from the welcoming Surf Utopia. It's almost as if Kiru was trying to troll us. In part 1 of this series, we went over the basic movement options for Surf, which probably won't get you through a full Surf map alone. We're going to address that in this video, and you'll be on your way to Surf competency. Welcome to part two of the surf tutorial series, Ramping for Beginners. In the previous video, we learned how to board a ramp, how to ascend and descend on ramps, how to flick for height, and how to air strafe. If you don't know these concepts, please watch the previous video. Lesson five, curved ramps. There are many ramps in surf that are curved. Some curve up or downwards, but some also curve laterally. When we surf these ramps, the typical ramp board equilibrium is interrupted, and we must take corrective action to stay on the ramp. That sounds difficult, but don't worry. Oftentimes it's as simple as air strafing away from the ramp at a similar rate the ramp is curving. Air strafe too quickly, and you will lose connection with the ramp and start to fall. Air strafe too slowly, and you will start to ascend the ramp. If we don't have a lot of speed, however, we may slide off the ramp. This is because we aren't pressing against the ramp enough to provide us with lift. We can easily press against the ramp by simply using the typical boarding key. You will need to learn the balance of this concept, especially when starting out, so get practicing. Sometimes you may surf all the way around a bend with the boarding key. Sometimes you may be able to use a combination of both, and sometimes you may simply strafe around the bend. Lesson six, catching a fall. In lesson two, we discussed a fault of looking towards the center of the ramp when boarding. What I didn't mention, however, is that you can get more speed when boarding by executing two techniques. The first technique is to face away from the ramp as you board. The second technique is to be traveling away from the ramp as you board. If you execute these two techniques and then smoothly turn your view parallel with the ramp, you will have caught much more of your falling speed and transferred it into forward speed. The easiest way to do this is to consider what position you jump towards a ramp ensuring that you are looking and traveling away from the ramp. However, when you become more confident with air strafing from lesson four, you can simply strafe away from the ramp before you board it. There is an optimal proportion to which these techniques are used, but we will cover that in the intermediate and advanced tutorials. Lesson seven, board position. In lesson one, we learned how to board a ramp, but I didn't draw your attention to where we should board ramps. At that point, any board would do. However, board position has a large influence on the speed we can gain from ramps. In general, the more we fall down to a ramp, the more important it is that we board high. If we are not very high above the ramp, high board position becomes less important. This is of course relative to the ramp that you are boarding, however. If we board high on the ramp while falling quickly, we have more time to effectively catch our fall, which we learned in lesson six. If we have more time to catch our fall, there is more opportunity to transfer our falling speed into forward speed. Lesson eight, swooping. There are many ramps in surf, but most standard ramps are surfed in the same way. We board high on the ramp, surf to the bottom, and flick off the ramp from a position high on the ramp. This means that the path we take on a ramp from a side view is curved. I'd like to call this swooping, but this really doesn't have a name. We should learn to swoop smoothly on many ramps, Executing this effectively is key to maximizing speed. Not all ramps are made the same, and different ramps require different swoops, and some no swoop at all. 
play around with different swooping paths and see which way of swooping works best for each ramp. Lesson 9. Combining ramps. Remember stage 2 on beginner. This stage was very difficult for me as a beginner as I had no clue how to combine even the simplest of ramp transitions. When we leave a ramp, we should be considering how we are going to navigate to the next. This requires a reasonable grasp of what we learned in lesson 4, air strafing. When we flick off the ramp, we strafe wherever we need to go to comfortably board another ramp. Keep in mind that we should consider our learnings from the previous three lessons. We should be considering how we are going to catch our fall, our board position and how we are going to swoop on the next ramp. Failing to execute this will significantly reduce your speed and will make most surf maps impossible. Whereas executing this competently will preserve the speed that you have previously gained, transferring it to the next ramp. This way we can build speed throughout a surf map, progressively transferring more of our fall speed from gravity into forward speed. Finally, nine lessons later, you are equipped with the knowledge needed to complete tier one surf maps, with maybe an exception or two. In the previous video, lessons one through four, I pointed out that you may master these lessons quickly. This isn't the case with lessons five through nine. Lessons five through nine can be very nuanced and expert surfers are still perfecting their ability in these five areas. If you give yourself some time to practice these ideas, you will be completing surf maps in no time. Beating all of your friends? That's a different question. I will cover these concepts and more in much more detail in the intermediate and advanced sections of this tutorial series. So when you feel comfortable with these techniques and want to learn more, it will be time to move to lesson 10. Next in the playlist is part three of the beginner series, which covers much of the need to knows that every beginner surfer should know. These ideas are not surf skills, but knowledge around surf and counter-strike. I sincerely hope that these tips help you to learn the ropes of surf, because the more I learned about surf, the more joy I got out of it, and I would love the same for you. Thanks for watching this video.